welcome everyone and uh, uh, we'll be here in the session where I'll answer all the questions you might have about the, the four-day week. But before I answer the questions, let me um, ask you a few questions. Um, so if this is Mantimeter, so if you can go with your phones or the laptops to www.menti.com and use this code just to get the feeling about your perceptions about the, the four-day week. Um, Keep it, uh, keep it open, I'll do an end survey. So first question is, is not a trick question. It's, uh, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you think that the four day week will make people uh, happier yeah. in general? Okay, uh, now uh, a slightly uh, tougher question. Do you think the four-day week would harm or improve the economy? And there are three answers, harm or scale down the economy, not much impact, improve the economy. So feel free to answer. Uh, uh, <laughs> I force you not to, to, to make a, a decision, no? not just. Uh, don't know. Uh, this is pretty, yeah. Uh, okay, okay, three, three, three. This is, this is pretty good. I think we are dying, so uh, that's, uh, let's see how you're going to feel after, um, after the talk. Now, the, the final one. If there are any questions that you have right now, uh, uh, if you want to write them, uh, and I'll make sure you won't go unanswered. But uh, you'll, you'll have plenty of time to, uh, to ask questions. But if you want now something that you really want to, uh, to bring from this session. I'll give. OK, so this one is very practical. Uh, this is already thinking way ahead. Uh, is what do you do in practice when you're like uh, lawyers or consultants that are paid by, by the hour? We'll talk about that. Um, is someone? I'll I'll leave this here, so you will have uh, you'll keep all the the questions registered, and I'll yeah I'll start. We'll keep all the questions registered. Um, so this answer to the to the questions is pretty much the general feeling about the four day week. Uh, it arouses general sympathy. Everyone thinks we would all be happier with a four day week, but. Uh, a lot of people think it would harm the economy. We are, when we are working, we are contributing to the economy, and if we are not working, it will scale down the economy, making us all poorer. And this is uh, a, a common narrative uh, and a common view from, from economics. Um, so I, I wrote a book trying to challenge this, uh, uh, this, this view. And uh, why I think... Uh, People think somehow this view is slightly simplistic. Um, this is uh, last week in Davos, in the World Economic Forum. And uh, Thursday, there were three sessions. You can see which one was the most popular. You had four-day week in the name of national security and investing. The one that everyone, uh, there was no seats available, was the four-day week in the World Economic Forum. So it's a discussion that's being had. It comes in the news all the time, the four-day week, companies moving to a four-day week. So that, that argument that, oh, if you are not working, uh, the we are going to harm the economy, uh, there is a sense that there is much more uh, to it. And that's why I wrote the book. And my view um, is a view of the four-day week as a social innovation, a better way to organize economic activity in the 21st century. So it's not just because we'll all be happier, but uh, because the economy in the 21st century is fundamentally different from the economy in the 20th century, uh, and the uh, four-day week is a better way to organize it. Now, the plan for today, uh, there will be three parts. The first part um, is uh, why would a four-day week improve the economy? So this draws on my book, 
namely uh, it's a lot about economics, the big picture, why we should organize the economy around a four-day week. The second part is much, uh, much more hands-on. Um, so why does a four-day week improve business? And this is drawing on my experience. Uh, I've, I was asked by the Portuguese government to coordinate their four-day week pilots. Uh, as there have been many around the world, uh, Portugal is also organizing its own in the private sector, and they asked me to coordinate. So I've talked a lot to many, uh, many firms, uh, explaining the benefits and hearing them what are their, uh, what are they scared of, and what are the challenges in front. And this will be the second part of of the talk, and then we will leave space for one hour just of questions, debate, et, uh, etc. So the first part, big picture, second part, really uh, hands-on what it means for businesses. Now, uh, so it draws on my book, Fridays and Saturday, how the four-day week uh, will save the economy. Now, there's nothing biological or physiological, uh, theological about working five days. The working week is a social, political, economic construct. In the 19th century, we worked six days a week, and it was in 1908 that the first firms in the US starting adopting this radical and new management practice called the five-day work week. Um, the movement got a big boost in 1926 when Henry Ford, that's now considered the greatest entrepreneur of the 20th century, implemented in all its factories. Uh, Twelve years later, it moved from management practice to the rest of the economy through legislation in 1938, June 1938, with what's called the Fair Labor Standards Act that installed the, the, the five-day, 40-hour week. It didn't apply to all firms. It applied only to large firms doing interstate commerce. And it was in the following decades that it expanded uh, to, to reach uh, all the other corners of the economy. So it took uh, three decades, the 40s, the 50s, and 60s were all, uh, there were expansions of the Fair Labor Standards Act. Now, all the criticisms that you hear today about the four-day week are exactly the same as the criticisms you would hear in the 1930s about the five-day week, that it's impracticable to all industries, that's an utopia. We always worked six days uh, at the <laughs> back then. Um, now, what's really uh, amazing by studying this period, this movement from six to five, is that uh, soon after it was implemented by legislation, the critics disappeared. After 38, it's hardly you can find any critics, and you start finding the first visionaries of the four-day week. The first visionary of the four-day week on record was in 1956, Republican Vice President Richard Nixon, that said the four-day week will be coming soon. Why? Why did it happen? Why did the criticisms disappear and gave rise to the first visionaries so soon, less than uh, a bit more than a decade after the five-day week was uh, generalized in the economy? Because people realized, after it was implemented, that the five-day working week was a better way to organize the economy in the 20th century. The economy in the 20th century was fundamentally different from the economy in the 19th century. It was an economy of mass production and mass consumption, propelled by uh, Henry Ford and his, uh, his revolutions in, the, in his factories. And this is precisely what I think is happening now. Uh, after 100 years, we still organize the economy in the same way around the five-day week, but the economy and the societies are fundamentally different. Since this period, uh, everything has changed. Uh, the technology we use with the digital, uh, the speed of communication, the types of jobs that we do that are much more intensive uh, mentally than, than the, factory, the factory job. But also demographics. Uh, the change, uh, we live uh, much longer than 50 years ago, and especially the role of women in society. If 50 years ago the labor participation in the labor market was very low, now it's, uh, uh, it's very high. So it's, everything in society has changed, but we still work the exact same way. So the argument, the, 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 the root of my argument is not that, oh, yes, we should... Uh, uh, have a four-day week because we'll all be happier. No, it's because all these structural changes that happened in the economy that were uh, 
very, very strong in the last 20, 30 years, really changed everything, and we haven't figured out a way to adapt the way we work. Now, um, I'm an economist. That's a, that's a character flaw, I, I apologize. Uh, and you know economists, uh, if you know one thing about economists, is that they disagree about how the economy works. Keynes famously said that, uh, uh, Churchill said about Keynes, uh, that uh, uh, if there are two economists in the room, they'll have two opinions. And if you, one is Mr. Lord Keynes, you'll have three very different uh, opinions. So economists disagree on how the economy works, on what's fundamentally. Uh, so what, I, um, what I, I'll, I'll do in the book, I try to view the four-day week from different economic angles. So I've enlisted the help of four of the greatest political economists in history. Uh, each one viewed the economy in a different way. Um, and I'm going to look at the four-day week from four different angles. So I'll give you the overview of, uh, of the arguments. Uh, John Minor Keynes, uh, British economist, you don't need any presentation. Uh, reason number one, because it is possible. Uh, the choice that we make as society about how much we work and how much we enjoy leisure, it's precisely that. It's a choice. There's no law of economics that tells us that we should work five days or six or four. Economics tells us that it's a choice that we as a society should, uh, should make. Reason number two, because it will fuel the economy through the demand for leisure industries. And uh, I don't have many, many quotes. I have this one from Henry Ford that he wrote when he moved in his factories from six to five days. And he wrote, Instead of business being slowed up because people uh, are off work, it will be speeded up because the people consume more in their leisure than in their working time. And this will lead to more work, and this to more profits, and this to more wages. The result of more leisure will be the exact opposite of what most people might suppose it to be. To consume, we need money, but we also need time. It's in our free time that we feel our needs, and it's in our free time that we go to restaurants, to theaters, to cinemas, that we travel. Um, so there is a lot of industries that would be directly ben uh, benefited by a four-day week. Tourism, hospitality, uh, culture, entertainment. Um, this is uh, what happened when soon after the US, in the decades after they moved to a five-day week, you had a boom in uh, cinema, you had the, the McDonald's started in the 40s, Best Western started in the 40s. If you play the guitar, Fender started in the, in the one of the main pr uh, pr producers of, of guitars, started in the 40s. Dixon Sporting Good, the main uh, sports retailers of the US, started as a fishing shop also <laughs> in the 40s. All that to uh, the new, uh, the creation of companies to satisfy the new needs brought by the leisure time. Uh, Joseph Schumpeter, not as uh, famous uh, economist, he lived a little bit under the shadow of Keynes, but he was also uh, the, uh, the, the, one of the greatest uh, economists contemporary to Keynes. He was Austrian, uh, and um, he coined the term creative destruction. He was a thinker of capitalism, why capitalism is the best system to organize the economy. Um, so reason uh, number three, because it will increase productivity. This is uh, why companies throughout the world in many different sectors are uh, trying and are moving to a four-day week as a management practice because they see it makes business better. Uh, workers come more rested, so they make fewer mistakes. They work more creatively in the other, in the other days. It reduces absenteeism and rotation of workers. That's very costly for firms. Um, so we'll, this is the, the reason why firms are doing it, and this is what we'll be talking about in the second half of the, of the, of the talk. Now, reason number four, uh, because it will unleash the potential of a vast talent pool of innovators. Where does innovation come from? Innovation, economists think, is the driver of capitalism. The economic growth comes from innovation, creating new companies, new products, new ideas. Where does it come from? We have uh, a view that comes from R&D departments of uh, big multinationals, but there's a lot of innovation coming from regular people 
with regular jobs that use their leisure time to create something new. And um, again, coming back to Henry Ford, he wrote in his memoirs in 22 before moving to a five day week, um, how he actually built his first car with internal combustion engine. It was in, 19, in 1890 that I began uh, on the double cylinder engine. During the first several months, I was in the night shift at the electric light plant. He was working six days a week on a Thomas Edison electricity plant, uh, which gave me very little time for experimenting. But after that, I was in the day shift. And every night and all of Saturday night, I worked on the new motor. I cannot say it was hard work. No work with interest is ever hard. In 1892, I completed my first motor car, and it was not until the spring of the following year that it ran to my satisfaction. It took him three years to build his car with internal combustion engine, uh, working um, at, all night, every night and all of Saturday night, uh, having a six-day uh, day job. He became Henry Ford not because what he did as a worker, but what he did in his leisure time, uh, driven by his passion. And when we go, um, when we actually study many, many businesses started, new ideas started precisely with someone having a day job and then uh, developing something new in their leisure time. Uh, Nike started with an accountant that uh, started importing running shoes from, from Japan. Apple, uh, Apple, uh, uh, Steve Jobs, he wasn't really doing much, but Steve Wozniak, that's his companion, uh, he was working for HP while they were building the first Macintosh. Um, Spanx, Harley Davidson, um, lots of board games or Minecraft that was sold to uh, Microsoft for I don't know how many billion dollars uh, uh, was a project of, uh, born out of leisure. And that's why Wired magazine um, tells you uh, entrepreneurs don't give up your day jobs yet. So in management, there is something called hybrid entrepreneurship. What it means is starting a new company while having a day job. And researchers in management find that companies that start like that are more likely to, uh, to survive, um, are more likely to, to survive those, the, the first year, those first, uh, first years. Why? Because it, they put much less pressure. They take pressure off the entrepreneur because they have some, uh, some stable income source, so they can devote their time to, the, uh, to, to their company. So we can't think of leisure time as time away from the economy. It's not that we just go to a room, we are, go in a chamber, a happy chamber. We go in, we close, uh, we are, feel happy, and we come out. Uh, no, everything that we do in our leisure time has an economic impact, and some of it comes from the creation of new ideas or new companies. Uh, third economist, Karl, Karl Marx, uh, also no introduction needed. Reason number five, because it will reduce technological unemployment. Um, we have wave after wave of industrial revolution. So now we are in the fourth, uh, in the fourth wave, we have a period of very rapid developments in AI, nanotechnology, artificial, um, and uh, these are great for, uh, for the economy. They push the frontiers. Uh, this drives economic growth, but there's always uh, a side effect. And one, all, every industrial revolution, a side effect was technological unemployment. When the car came, all the stable boys saw their jobs and their livelihoods jeopardized because of the car. When you automatize the, the telephones, all the switchboard operators the same thing. So it happens, wave after wave of technological innovation comes with this cost. It's a temporary cost. There's no stable voice unemployed today, but it's one when it's very rapid change, it really uh, can jeopardize the, the structure of society. When you see so many people losing, uh, depreciating, uh, seeing their skills depreciated. Throughout history, one way to deal with the, the technological unemployment was the reduction of the working day, first from 12 to 10 to eight hours, and then the working week from six to five was always a way to, uh, it doesn't solve the problem, but it mitigates. Uh, it reduces the pace of job separation, of jobs uh, destruction, of people being fired. It just gives a bit more time, either for workers to retire, um, or for workers to use the time 
to uh, convert to a different occupation that's more promising. So uh, a lot of, when you see the uh, surveys on the four day week, what people use their time for, a lot of people go back to study, go back to earn new qualifications. And this might be very important for specific occupations that being uh, jeopardized, taken by, by, by robots. Reason number six, because it will raise wages and reduce inequality. Uh, in the last uh, 40 years, basically since 1980s, um, the uh, wages uh, for a large part of the workforce have stagnated. They haven't shared the benefit of economic, uh, of economic growth. Uh, how can the four-day week help raise the wages? Well, um, wages don't change by law. It's not that the government can come and say wages have to increase 10% or 15%. It changes by market forces. And what are market forces? Demand and supply. Uh, if the four-day week, by increasing the demand for leisure industries, more people for restaurants, for hotels, um, it's going to, uh, and also because productivity increases, uh, it's going to push demand for workers up. At the same time, because workers supply fewer hours, supply goes down. As this pressure, uh, demand and the reduction in supply will put pressure on wages to go up. Uh, the decades after the Fair Labor Standards Act in the US, the three decades, 40s, 50s and 60s, the, real, the wages, real wages, so after discounting for inflation, grew up at 10% uh, a decade. Uh, sorry, 30% a decade. And before and after, they haven't uh, risen more than 10%. So the, the years or the decades uh, of highest wage growth in the US uh, were uh, the 40s, 50s, and, and 60s. Uh, finally, running uh, last uh, economist, Frederick von, von Eyck, the father of um, classical uh, liberalism, reason number seven because it will give people more freedom to choose what they want to do with their time. So for Hayek, what was important was the freedom to choose, for everyone to choose. Uh, now, can really people choose the amount of hours they work? Uh, some economists held this view, but when you actually go, go and see, um, it's not really true. We organize society around a 40 hour, five day, 40 hour week, that's the norm. And it's very hard to deviate. So if someone wants to work only four days individually, it can, can work, it can move to part-time, but it has uh, wage, proportional wage cuts. But worse than that, that's the, uh, it, it has another cost, is that usually they are seen as the slackers in the company. They pass on promotion opportunities uh, in the company because they go to part-time. Um, it's very well documented that people who get the promotion are usually the ones who put in more hours uh, in the job. So it, it fosters this rat race where just putting more hours. And so when people move to part time to, four, to a four day week, it's very, very costly. And who does it? Mainly women. In the UK, 40% of women move to, uh, to part time, um, much, much more than, than men. Now think the other way around. Uh, under a four-day week, people will be free uh, to work more if they want. No one, the, the weekend doesn't prevent anyone from working uh, more. People can moonlight with a second job, use the gig economy, uh, write, uh, write a book, do a consultancy project. Um, the, the weekend and the, uh, the work week are just ways of coordinating certain types of work. And the week is to coordinate teamwork in companies. Uh, but um, the, the weekend is a uh, way to coordinate individual work, uh, the one that doesn't require an uh, someone to answer an email, uh, as well as the work in leisure industries. So even uh, uh, conservative MPs, they like to moonlight with second jobs beyond Westminster. It's not, uh, not a problem. And it actually happened when you move from six to five, some people use their free time uh, to moonlight with a, with a second job. So if you just put in the perspective of freedom, people, uh, the system organized on a four day week will give a freedom to everyone to work more if they want, uh, which is not so much the case uh, right now under five day week. And then finally, um, reason number eight, 
because by sharing uh, the, the benefits of economic progress to everyone in society, it will help reconcile the polarized society and deflate populist movements. Um, you, you see, populists, uh, they bank on the sentiment of disappointment towards the, the, the economy. And what they use, uh, they use things that are divisive. The narrative is always us against them, uh, nationals against immigrants, uh, men against women. Um, it's, it's, it's always divisive. But the four-day week is not divisive. You've seen when I asked you, everyone thinks we would all be happier with a four-day week. When you ask the surveys, 70, 80, 90 percent of people say they, they would like a four-day week. They might be scared, like one third of you, that it might scale down or harm the economy. Uh, but as a goal, as an idea, as a name, it doesn't divide society. So I think we can, um, uh, it's not easy, and I'll never say it's, it's easy and you can do it in 30, in 30 days or 100 days in office, but it's a good goal to have. And all these four economists, they are torchbearers of competing ideologies. Uh, but that's my view of the four-day week as a social innovation, is that you uh, might be Marxist or progressive or uh, conservative or liberal. You wouldn't agree with all the arguments, but there would be arguments that would speak to you. And I really believe that if we can uh, work uh, everyone together, we can make it happen much sooner than uh, what people might, might think. Um, so this is my view, the big, uh, the big picture. But uh, and if, you, if you see a lot of the effects are the things that would happen to the economy, to society of working less. But when you are a company, it doesn't really, uh, it's going to increase demand for leisure industries. You won't get a benefit, no? So why would I give four day week to my workers? I won't benefit because I'm not a, you know, you are not a restaurant. If you are a restaurant, you would benefit if everyone else did. But um, you also, if one of your uh, workers is a new Henry Ford, you also won't benefit directly. Uh, you know, you'll benefit indirectly from the, uh, uh, a more innovative economy. So now the decision when firms are moving, uh, none of seven of these arguments are not for them. Okay? These are arguments for us as society to think about moving to a four-day week. The one that matters is the one about productivity. Does it make my business better or not? Um, and this is uh, starting the second part of the, uh, of the talk and the one that matters the most. Um, so it's not about the economy, it's about firms. And firms are doing throughout the world uh, in different sectors Firms uh, are trialing the four-day uh, the, the four week, either individually or as, um, as international pilots. So group of companies in the, wor the way that we can measure results. Um, this is a list of the trials that have been uh, US, Ireland, Australia, New Zealand. These were organized by Four Day Week Global. This uh, comes a lot in the news. This is uh, a non-profit association started um, by uh, Andrew Barnes, the CEO of uh, a big uh, um, uh, uh, fiduciary company in, um, in New Zealand that implemented the four-day week and now created this association to help other uh, businesses move uh, from a five to a four-day week. Uh, the results came out of their pilot came out in November. Most companies decided to maintain the four-day week. Uh, they are also working with Autonomy, a, th a British think tank, um, and uh, for the week movement on the UK pilot that made a lot of headlines in the UK, 70 companies. Um, the results came out, come out, are coming out in February. Um, most companies decided to maintain the four-day week. Uh, in Iceland, there was a trial, took five years. It was in the public sector. Uh, in Spain, there is a government-sponsored uh, trial uh, starting now that's directed to industrial companies, um, more manufacturing. Uh, and in Portugal, uh, they decided uh, to have their own pilot, and I was invited by the government to coordinate uh, their, their four-day week, uh, their, their four-day week trial. So we have either 
firms moving individually to a four day week or in, in, uh, in group. There's uh, uh, advantages and inconvenience of, of, uh, of, of both. Now, when we talk about a four day week, um, everyone has slightly different ideas about what it is in their, uh, in their mind. It can, uh, it can be many different uh, d things. There are three principles that we have, and I think they define generally um, what uh, the movement thinks of the four day week. First is that there can be no wage cuts. So it's not just moving workers to part time. Okay? It's not just asking, do you want to go part time? You go to a four day week. That's part time. Uh, that already exists. A lot of workers do it. That's not the four day week as a management practice. The second is that there has to be a reduction in working, weekly working hours. So it's not just a compressed work week. That also exists since the 70s, uh, for, uh, what's called uh, 440, 40 hours in four days. It's also not, uh, not that. Um, and the other element is that for companies, it's always voluntary and reversible. So this is not, about, this is not a law. This is not a right of workers. This is a management practice, and as of, as of that, uh, if it's not working, it can always uh, go back, and that's always there. If it's not working for firms, they, uh, they, they go back. Uh, there are no other conditions or restrictions in the implementation. So unlike what my book says, Friday is the new Saturday, it doesn't mean that companies have to close on Friday. Uh, they have to choose how they want to, to, uh, to, to organize, and it doesn't have to be uh, you don't have to close uh, on, a, on a particular day. Okay, so um, in, the, in, the, in the pilot, we, uh, we opened up, we had sessions with, with companies, so companies could just uh, register and uh, to hear more about the project. Okay, we had about 85 uh, companies, uh, small, medium, and a few large, some uh, in the, 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 the Portuguese stock market. Uh, this doesn't mean that they will all sign up. So now, until February, they'll decide whether they want to sign up to the pre-pilot phase, the phase where they start really thinking in practice what would they have to do in their company to, to, to test it. But uh, we had sessions with all these 85 companies, um, and uh, this is uh, the benefits as we present to them about a four-day a four week. So why, why, why does it improve business? So number one is one almost natural effect of workers being more rested. So workers that are more rested, they naturally work better in the other days. They are more creative. They make fewer mistakes. Uh, the association between uh, hours of work and accidents and injuries or um, uh, errors, it's really well documented with nurses, doctors, uh, police, uh, occupational in injuries. So there is just one kind of natural effect. But uh, this is really not, not enough. So it's not just because people uh, are, are more rested in the other days that suddenly you can produce in four days what you are now producing in, uh, in five. But it's, it's a start. Now, the second very important is that the four-day week is not, as a management practice is not just working the same way and leaving one day before. Uh, it involves changing the way the firm is organized, the processes within the firm. So a lot of emphasis when you do the pre-pilot phase, when you start preparing the, the change, is this, um, the design, the changes in processes that have to occur inside the firm uh, to make it more uh, workers and the firm itself more productive in the other, uh, in the other days. And this is, um, this is the, uh, the key. So in practice, what, what do firms do? Uh, number one in the list is shortening meetings to uh, half an hour, having a really very well set pattern uh, about why you have a meeting and uh, who is in the meeting. Um, uh, and shorten the, the, the time. Uh, sometimes it's adopting technology. Uh, so uh, a chain, uh, a restaurant chain in, 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 in Spain, in Madrid, uh, they, they implemented a four-day week. They didn't have to hire any staff, but they did changes. Uh, for example, people started ordering and paying via WhatsApp and then via an app uh, to speed up 
the ordering and the, and the payment, so it would speed up the, the, uh, the process for the, the waiters. They also changed the menu uh, in the restaurant to make it faster, uh, so you wouldn't have to, hi to hire more, more, more cooks. Uh, automating certain processes. Uh, another one that's very popular in, in, in many consultants, all these uh, kind of services, is creating blocks of work. A lot of the time wasted uh, is time wasted in interruptions, uh, in checking the email and someone coming. So a lot of the companies do create blocks of work for teamwork, blocks for individual work where no one in the company interrupts anyone, uh, blocks for, for emails. And sometimes they change the physical space itself uh, to make it uh, more uh, productive. So in the case of restaurants, altering the profile of tables so you shorten the time for waiters to go, to co to go and come back. Um, does anyone have a question in this? There, there is uh, uh, a natural question that comes. So my question is, why would you not do that in May and become productive and then still keep the five days if you want productive? Exactly. So when we talk about a four-day week, uh, that's the precisely the question. I, uh, so the, uh, the, the movement, uh, when we talk about the, the management practice, talks about the 180-100 rule. You work, uh, you get 100% of pay, the workers. They work 80% of time as long as they uh, provide 100% of productivity. So the focus is on productivity. Um, um, and how we can increase uh, compet uh, competitiveness of the, the, the company and the productivity in the other days. Now, if all these changes of processes, uh, why don't we do a 100, 100, 120 rule? You pay 100% of the wage, you work 100% of the time, and you get 120%. So the, the question, or the, my answer, is that to do this is not easy. To change the way the company works, it's not easy. Uh, and very often, the workers are themselves a force uh, of blocking. You, are, you have all your workers, 40-hour uh, weeks, uh, some on the verge of burnout. And then you come, oh, we are going to introduce a new software. Or we have to redesign the, the workspace. Or you have to start automating some Excel spreadsheets. Uh, and you say, oh, I'll save time. But the time would be to work even more. So all these changes are very hard to do um, just naturally. And very often, it's only when a company is on the ropes. No, it's really going through difficulties that people come together and say, we really have to change the way we work. Now here, this is one of the biggest advantage, is that you have everyone working to make it, uh, to make it work. So when you, when you do this, all, all these decisions, a lot of these changes are done by the workers themselves. And they'll actively participate in the change because they know it's coming for um, uh, the, the, you know, the benefit, the ultimate benefit is, is for them. So here you'll count uh, so some, uh, some entrepreneurs that implemented it for the week. They say it's the best team building exercise that you could get. Uh, because it puts everyone in the company working for the, the, the same direction. So this is one of, of the answers. Now the second answer um, is, um, uh, is a, an historical uh, episode from, from Henry Ford. So before he implemented the, the five-day week in uh, 1913, he implemented the assembly line. So his objective was always to produce more cars, the cheapest possible. And he did this, break, this big change uh, It was new in the car industry was the assembly line. And when he introduced, the productivity went up from 0 0.7 cars per worker to 1.1. So a very large increase in productivity. But he thought this should be much better. This is, has much more potential. We should have gotten much bigger gains. And he asked for a study. And what's the problem? Is it the machines? Is it the organization? Uh, and it turns out it wasn't any of them. It was workers themselves. So workers, they had a 10% absenteeism rate every day. So every day, 10% of workers wouldn't show up to the job. And a rotation of workers of 370% a year, that means the workers wouldn't stay longer than three months in his factories. Why? Because, so he was doing all this, uh, but 
uh, what he learned is that you can't uh, have all these processes to in, in improve productivity without thinking of the workers. Because all these processes intensify the work. They make it more intensive. Uh, and then why would a worker that receives the same wage stay in his factories where the f uh, Cadillac or Chrysler's factory next, next door uh, pays the same and the work is much lighter? Uh, and then he couldn't get productivity gains when every, all workers are just constantly leaving the company. Uh, you can't get a team together, they can't learn uh, properly because when they learn, they are, already, uh, they are already out. And it was in that moment, immediately, he said, we are going to do uh, the $5 day, um, which was a doubling of the wage in the industry. Um, and he did it not because uh, you know, he was a charity, he, uh, he did it because he wanted to retain staff and he wanted them to come and uh, not, not skip work because that's the, the, the assembly line required a lot of discipline in work. Um, ten years later, he thought more, better than increasing the wages is to give a five-day week because you'll have a benefit of their com the workers coming more rested in the other days. Um, so instead of increasing the wages, you give them more free time uh, and they will be better, uh, better, better workers. So uh, this part is, uh, is, is very important. And if you are a company thinking about the four day week, uh, it should all be uh, about this, how you can design, uh, change the processes to, uh, to improve uh, the work on the other, the other, uh, yeah, so. Um, now, the third, uh, the third point that's very important to firms is that when we talk about productivity, we're always thinking about the work producing more things. But productivity is actually sales minus intermediate costs, other costs for firms. And a lot uh, of what firms verify is that there's a lot of benefits in terms of reduction of other costs. And this could be if you do close on Friday, uh, this could be a reduction in the energy bill that's particularly uh, relevant in the, in the current economic situations. Uh, there is one of the statistics that always um, improves in firms is absenteeism. So workers, uh, uh, they take fewer sick days, they are sick less often, um, and they also, uh, either because of physical or mental illnesses, uh, burnout, stress, or just having you know, physical, uh, uh, physical problems, but also because of the life admin, if they have to take the kids to the doctor, or if themselves have to go to uh, renew the passport or doing, uh, um, they always use that day, that day off. So the reduction in absentee, of absenteeism, let's think about uh, in a care home, uh, care homes that implemented the four day week, they, they saw that uh, because of absenteeism rates went down, they didn't have to hire so many agency staff to cover shifts or pay extra to workers. So this uh, reduced a lot other, other costs. So recruitment costs and training, uh, they, they go down precisely because no one wants to leave the company. Uh, instead of, which a lot of companies are facing right now, this shortage of talent, shortage of workers. The workers are, are there. Um, they, uh, uh, when you, uh, the, the companies that implement a four day week, uh, they see workers exiting less and it's, they, they see this improvement in, uh, in uh, recruitment of, of workers. But what, what does it mean? When the turnover of workers is very high, it means you have to train them. Uh, many times it's costly, either in financial terms or in terms of time of managers to teach them uh, how to do their, uh, their, uh, their job. So this is one element that instantly improves. Uh, errors and, and accidents. In factories, when people are tired, they make errors. When you are producing something, this means that it's a defective piece. The higher you are in the chain of value, uh, it's, it means that a defective piece is very costly because it's material that goes, uh, that's, that's wasted. Um, uh, also, work accidents uh, and insurance premium on, on the, that you pay for accidents at work. Uh, a lot of companies uh, do genuinely care for workers and they have a lot of mental health initiatives and they, they, they spend money. The four-day week is the initiative 
to improve mental health in their work uh, in their workspace. All these all the pilots uh, in ev everywhere. It's uh, one of the things stress uh, burnout comes comes down, and I think that's pretty much uh, natural. Um, and other type of worker benefits. So what firms uh, see when they implement, they, they see these other gains, uh, reduction in other costs. And if you read uh, the, Henley, uh, the Henley Business School published a white paper on the four day week, the result of a big survey before and after the pandemic on firms that are already uh, doing the four day week. And uh, they account, um, uh, they count uh, all these savings that firms have outweigh the costs of a four-day week might have for companies. And in, in some industries, you might have to hire more workers. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a care home or a, a restaurant, most likely you do have to hire more workers. So you'll spend more, but then you'll also save on many, uh, uh, on many things. And they found that the savings outweigh the, the, the extra costs for firms. And then the fourth element, and this has been one of the most important with the firms in Portugal that, that, uh, that came to our sessions, um, is this, uh, uh, the problem with the, the shortage of workers, of talent. It's very hard to recruit talent, um, especially startups, new, uh, all the tech, the tech industries, but also in restaurants. So it's, it's, uh, it's been hard to recruit uh, workers. And this is, uh, uh, they're what they worry, and this is one of the elements that uh, improves a lot with the four-day week. Um, the, in, there was a, a bank, a digital bank in the UK, Atom Bank, that moved to a four-day week, and they saw a 500% increase in applications uh, soon, soon after, a few, a few weeks after. Um, and here, the view for companies uh, they, they, it's, uh, you have to view it as an alternative to wage increases. So uh, this is from this pilot in the US, Ireland, uh, Australia, and, and New Zealand, and by Four Day Week Global. And they ask the, the workers in, in the survey, if you were offered a five-day week job, how much of a salary increase would it take for you to accept and move out of the company for a five-day job? 40% said between 10 and 25, um, uh, sorry, 28%, 42% said uh, between 25 to 50% wage increases. 13% said more than 50% wage increase for me to go out. Uh, and 13% said no amount of money. So whether uh, you want it or not, whether you like it or not, uh, there was a cultural change of the perception of work-life balance that happened after the pandemic, especially with the younger generation. And the firms that can understand that. Uh, so this change, this change in cultural values, put more value. People give more value now to their to free time. And the firms that actually understand that and use that uh, will have a huge uh, gain in competitiveness in the labor market. Um, so Firms, uh, this is one reason why the four-day week is becoming popular in small and medium firms, because they use it as a way um, to compete with larger firms that pay higher wages. Uh, so higher firms, uh, bigger firms pay higher wages. They have more cap financial capacity, and very often the small, medium companies don't have. And what's the alternative? They'll give something unique that's valued by workers that large companies don't, don't give. Uh, which is a four uh, a four day week. So if you can only pay two thousand workers two thousand pounds to your workers, you, uh, you but you give a four day week, uh, you might be competing with someone uh, another firm that's paying three thousand work uh, three thousand pounds for the uh, for the workers. So you can get better uh, better workers in the in the labor market. Um, so these um, these are. Uh, the, main, the main benefits, is, I can tell you, we asked companies why are they interested in a project. Most of them is about uh, worries about stress and burnout of, of workers, about retention of, of staff and the recruitment of, uh, of, of talent. Uh, a lot is, uh, um, this is why companies are looking at this. And uh, you see a huge interest from uh, HR directors. Uh, it's for larger firms, usually the, the, 
the administration and the CEOs are a bit more uh, skeptical, um, to, say, uh, to, to say the least. But um, this is why when you put everything together, that's why firms say, it, you, know, you know what, it works better for, uh, for my business. Now, is it easy to do? It's not. Uh, so it's much easier if you want to retain staff to just increase 20% of wage if you have to, uh, if you have the financial capacity, because you can do it like this. Uh, you can direct to certain staff more than others. And when you do a four-day week, you do have to change the way you organize the company. Um, so it's much, uh, much harder. So how does, uh, how does it work? Um, and I think this is in general, if you're thinking about your own business. Uh, it starts with a phase where you have to uh, just think about. Think about, um, and uh, that's the, the period took us two, three months where we have these sessions, we talk to companies, and companies have to, to read about it, you know, do a bit of research, um, what, what are the benefits, and especially it's not, we, we should do it because of uh, sentimentalism, it's not that. You have to think, what's the problem of my company? What's the, the problems that we are facing? And can the four-day week be a solution for them? This could be retention of staff, this could be absenteeism, this could be uh, burnout and stress. This could be uh, companies that have a hard time having gender e uh, equality in their, in their workforce. Women don't stay in the company. Uh, some companies use the four-day week uh, with, um, as, as a way to, uh, it's much more valued by, by, uh, by women. And it does make the, the business more, uh, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, uh, benefits, uh, there's a gender, a very important gender aspect of it, and some, some companies do that. Uh, think about uh, that. So uh, that's the part where you should really think, is this uh, a solution to my problems? Does it fit my mission, of the, the mission of the company? Does it fit in how I see my company in five, uh, five ten years? Is this what, what I want? Then the second phase, which is the one, if for us it will start in February, is the, the pre-pilot. So this is the phase. Um, you should always, you should never really jump in immediately. No, it's a, okay, we'll do for the week from next week onwards. No, uh, you should always have a test. Uh, you know, six months, it's usually enough to see whether it's working or not. Um, and it's, it's always, uh, you should tell your employees to manage expectations. That's always reversible. We'll try, we'll see how it works. In principle, we'll go back, but if it works, then we'll, we'll, we'll keep it. But um, you need this to get everyone working. You know, they, they, you, the workers can't feel it is a, a, their right for the week, but it's this social contract in the company that requires them always to, be, uh, to, to deliver. Um, so this pre-pilot phase is the most important. Uh, this uh, will, uh, in Portugal, we'll be working with a 4 Week Global, and this is, uh, we'll have a series of workshops that explain how other companies have done it, what were the changes in processes, um, and then the third phase is the pilot itself, usually six months. The really the crucial phase is this one, because this is where you'll start thinking in practice how it would work in your company. So you'll, you'll sit, uh, sit down, oh, I'll have what you we'll have to do. So the first phase, it's this thinking about the benefits, whether they fit the, the company, uh, talk with some key players in the company, and uh, if you are in a big company and you are not the CEO, persuading the CEO, which is the, uh, the, the, the hardest part. Now, the, the second phase, then it's the, the, the most important one, this preparation for the pilot, and you need to assign an internal team to work on it. So you'll have to have a core team uh, to, uh, to think about the changes, design a chronogram of the implementation, the general principles. Um, so do you close on Friday or not? Some companies, um, they close on Friday. So companies that require a lot of uh, internal coordination. So it's a lot about uh, working in teams, like advertising companies where you have to brainstorm and you have to be all there at the same time. Uh, usually they close one day. The usual day is on Friday because it's already the slowest day. No one starts a new project on, on Friday. It's already slow, and usually that's the day that's uh, the most popular. But there are other companies that have customers throughout the five days, and they can't close on, on one day. So usually it, w it would work in shifts. So sometimes half of the workforce on Monday, half on Friday. 
uh, sometimes different days of, of the week. Um, this is actually the biggest problem, the difficulty for firms, it's this coordination. Uh, and, and that's the difficulty of moving to a four day when the economy is organized in five. If you close on Friday, it's worse for the customers and, um, and suppliers because you won't be there. So the coordination with the rest of the economy, if you give different days off, it's the problem is the internal coordination. If uh, I want to talk to my boss and it's his day off, then everything, you know, you have more sand in the, um, in the machine. So that's when you have to decide, uh, are you going to off Friday? Uh, some companies increase a little bit the hours worked in the other days, uh, half an hour more uh, to 34 hour week or uh, one hour more in some, in some cases. Um, now, another important thing is to define metrics to evaluate success. So this is an experiment. So you should take it as the most important thing is to learn from it. Uh, and learning means uh, you have to design. And, and this is actually uh, quite hard for many companies. This, um, and this is why it's so hard to measure productivity, even in a company. What's the productivity of a journalist? Um, is it just the number of articles they write or is it the popularity? Um, you know, it's, it's hard to measure uh, what's the productivity of a team and the members when you work in projects. Things are actually quite hard. That's why the easiest way is just think about the hours that people are working. And this is what a lot of businesses do. Oh, you work more hours? Yeah, so you're more productive. But in fact, it's, uh, it's not and we know it's not. And we know that sometimes when you work more hours, it's just uh, the opposite, nothing, nothing comes out. So this process of thinking about what metrics you have in your company, you already should have them, no key performance indicators, uh, but uh, it, it has to be very well prepared before. So when you get to the end of the pilot, it doesn't happen that uh, your CEO, oh, but uh, how about this? Oh, we didn't include it. So if it's important, you should prepare it before. Uh, also, the HR policies um, during pilots. So what happens when there's a bank holiday? What happens to holidays? What happens to extra hours during the pilots? So everything's clear. And the communication strategy. Uh, internally, how you talk to your uh, workers and with clients, which is very important. Um, you want to, uh, some companies tell them, some companies don't tell the clients and then ask them afterwards uh, how was the service in the last six months to see if they noticed anything, uh, a change in the, in the service. Um, and also with the media, because as you know, uh, the four day week guarantees you uh, news on The Guardian, on Financial Times, today on the BBC, uh, it, it has a lot of uh, media, uh, media impacts. And there are some companies who actually prefer not to have their name disclosed because when they do, they do have to have one full-time uh, person working on communication. And uh, finally, the changes in processes that you actually implement, these would be really bottom. Um, this is not the, the CEO uh, or the team, the, the, the person in charge of this project that will tell you, you and you what you have to do. It's basically uh, a lot of individual teams because you know what in your job you do that you don't really have to do, that's not important, that you just do because it was already done like this before. And this, all this rethinking, it's usually at a team level and you usually don't get it right in the pre-pilot. It's usually then the, the, all these, uh, how you perfect these changes is mainly during the, the pilot phase. And then there's a the phase of the pilot, which it turns out it's, it's, it's not as, uh, this is the, the phase two is a phase where a lot of companies give up, no? Because this is where you think about, you know, it would make it closer, no? Before it's just an idea, then you will think about all the issues that come. Uh, and this is uh, where it's very good to have uh, some help. This is where we will step in to help the, the, the companies. Not the consultancy like uh, the big four that go to the company with all these fresh, uh, freshly graduated, uh, that, that talk to everyone and then decide what you have to do in the company. It's, it's not like that. We'll just explain what, how other companies do it and then it's up to the teams uh, to see, uh, to learn from others and try to, to find the thing that works for the company. 
Um, and then the, the phase of the pilot is just the first month months is chaotic. Uh, every, you know, it, every firm says that the first month is chaotic, but then it just, uh, you just uh, learn, you know, you adapt pretty much like we did during the pandemic, no? It was cha chaos for a month, and then it's like, okay, Zoom. It's, I've done that all my life. Um, so usually you monitor sentiment uh, to see how it's going. Um, you uh, perfect the changes in the processes, and, and you adapt, okay? And you do this for six, six months, and then, then you'll decide uh, what you want. But the, the thing is, even if you go back, uh, you, you probably won't go back to how you worked before because you'll learn a lot in the process. So I think just the process of going through it, uh, you, uh, you as a company and as workers and managers, you do uh, learn, learn a lot. And the practices or what we, you know, what we observe from the, the pilots is that actually firms stick to it. So that's, um, um, th that's uh, yeah. So uh, this is what I had for you. Uh, if you do uh, think you, you might want to do it, these would be the players you would, uh, is, would want to talk to. The four-day week campaign and autonomy, they do services for companies. They were involved in a pilot. So the, the, doing it in a pilot has an advantage of a community, a network. Uh, so you have 30 companies or 40 companies doing it. and um, uh, you'll, you'll share, you'll have sessions, and I say, oh, I have a problem, I don't know what to do with holidays. Because now, 20 days, instead of four weeks of holidays, is five, five weeks. But I didn't want to give more holidays, uh, you know, we already give one, one more day. So sometimes, uh, how, how do you do? Some, some people reduce the, the holidays or ask, when you go on a week holiday, you put uh, five days. Uh, you use five days. So there's different ways of doing it. And uh, when you have a, a big contact, a contact with other companies, you feel more reassured. There is a big element of fear of trying something new. Uh, and uh, fear, as Henry Ford said, is the biggest, um, um, is the, uh, the bis biggest obstacle for entrepreneurs because they make them not try new things. You know, this, uh, this being afraid of, of failing. And uh, you know, just experimenting with a four-day week, you shouldn't really dramatize. Sometimes it seems that it's more dramatic than it is. Firms experiment with everything all the time. The good firms experiment, try new customers, try new products, try new prices. They change things and they test it and they see what works. And many, most times uh, it doesn't work, but then sometimes it does. So it's just an experiment, so six months, see, uh, see how it works. Um, and then uh, you can always go back. So in the UK, four-day week campaign autonomy, uh, four-day week global, and there's a new work time reduction center of excellence. Um, and they are trying to help more larger companies uh, moving into a four-day four week. If you see, although the large companies have the financial capacity to try it, no? Uh, they have uh, the ratio of profits to the wage bill is, is, is uh, quite high, so they do have financially, they wouldn't put any risk on trying the four-day week, but when you go and see, it's actually small and medium companies doing it, and very few large companies. Unilever in Australia, uh, Microsoft Japan tried it uh, for a summer, but it's really Unilever in Australia and New Zealand that, that, uh, that are the, the, the biggest examples of large companies that, uh, that do it. Otherwise, it's mainly medium, uh, small and medium companies because they have more agility in this change, decision-making and the changes in processes. No, it's, it's harder for bigger, bigger firms. So uh, this, this is it. Um, we'll, uh, I'll stop here.